In this video on C Sharp Basics, we finally reached the conclusion of our series. So first of all, thank you. I really appreciate your viewership and to all of those of you who liked, favorited, and subscribed to my channel, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I really appreciate all the kind words that I've received through all of the series and videos that I've put out on this channel. It really keeps me motivated to continue to present to you the content that I do. Now, once again, uh, I do get this question from time to time. If you do enjoy this video series, please feel free to donate just by visiting my channel and you can click on the donate button. Now, in some countries, it's not available, uh, probably due to either taxes or exchange rates or something, you know, some other reason like that. Uh, but don't worry about it. You don't don't feel obligated to. Uh, I just thought because I get that question uh, quite a bit, I just figured I, I might as well let you guys know that there is a way to donate uh, at the main channel page. Now, some additional items that are worth Googling and YouTubing now that you've seen all of these videos within this series. First, I strongly recommend you learn about the solid principles of object-oriented design. Uh, the solid principles are a really um, important concept to understand when you're trying to figure out how you should actually manage your code. What are some good solid principles that help you understand how to design the code? And SOLID is an acronym. Uh, it stands for Single Responsibility Principle, Open and Closed Principle, the Liskov Substitution Principle, the Interface Segregation Principle, and D stands for Dependency Inversion Principle. And all five of those principles are really good at helping you write effective and long-lasting code. I also recommend that you learn more about object-oriented programming design patterns. There are several different patterns that help you organize your code and kind of anticipate some of the upcoming pitfalls that you might encounter while you're designing your code. You should also look into something called separation of concerns. This is a concept that's very well known in object-oriented programming circles. It also goes hand in hand with decoupled code, which is a term that I did use frequently throughout the series when we were talking about classes and abstractions. Decoupled code is really the ultimate goal of what you want in your code, because it makes it easier for you to take parts out of your code and replace them with new parts. And then finally, there's something called Agile. And Agile is a method of planning out the design phases of your code. So I highly recommend that if you're trying to plan a project, you learn more about the Agile process. So once again, thank you very much, everybody, for your viewership. Uh, I hope to see you guys again in the next series.